begin today's ceremonies, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you the officers of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in Arizona. Please join me in welcoming the Grand Lodge of Masons in Arizona. be here today as chairman of the Yampai County Board of Supervisors and on behalf of the Board of Supervisors I want to thank you for being here today. 100 years ago on a day much like this in October 1916 the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Arizona laid and dedicated the cornerstone of our beautiful courthouse whose history you heard and experienced earlier today. A Masonic cornerstone ceremony is an elegant ceremony wherein the stone is symbolically squared, leveled, and made plumb to ensure that it is given its proper respect and appro appropriately laid for the security of the superstructure to be erected. In such form, the craftsman have done their duty and the cornerstone may then be declared well formed due and trusty this year being the centennial of the courthouse and the sesquicentennial of the aslan lodge number one the first chartered lodge in arizona it is fitting that we have present the grand lodge of arizona to rededicate the cornerstone and symbolically reestablish that the cornerstone is properly squared, leveled, and plumbed. 
for all future use to be conducted in this place, the courthouse of Yavapai County. It has ever been a custom among the fraternity of free, order, free and accepted Masons that upon the laying of the cornerstone that within it a memorial of the moment and of its constitution may be imbued with safekeeping. This to ensure that the future, should the future occasion arise, it may be made known what was done on that day and the record of the actions undertaken may be made clear for future generations to highlight an unending and tirelessly industry of Freemasonry. A variety of objects that were stored in this capsule are in your program. A variety of objects therefore may be stored in the protection of this time capsule, hidden away from fury of the elements, the violence of man, or the rage which may be done to lay bare the foundations of this building. At the laying of the cornerstone in 1916, such an object was thus placed to be retrieved only upon the time wherein the Yavapai County Courthouse is no longer of sound structure or use, thus rendering its purpose devoid of any further contribution to our great and beautiful Yavapai County. For those desiring to visit our scenic county, the Yavapai County Courthouse remains a staple of the downtown industry and iconic image of small town USA. A focal point driving our community into the future with strong stewardship of our past. Today, the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Arizona undertake their sacred duty to rededicate that which was established in our past for the gift of our present that our future generations may never forget. Thank you. And now it gives me great honor and pleasure to turn over today's ceremonies to the Grand Lodge of Masons in Arizona, the rededication of the Yakupai County Courthouse Orders. Good afternoon to everyone today. It is a great honor for the Grand Lodge of Arizona to be able to come today and rededicate this cornerstone. For those that don't know, Freemasonry is the oldest and largest fraternity in the world. We work together, attempting to have a more civilized well, and well-managed society that we live in. And we try to use our lives as examples for everyone. Brethren, it is my pleasure that the Grand Lodge now proceed with the ceremony of rededicating this cornerstone in accordance with our ancient custom. But by our, as our fraternity teaches, no man should ever enter upon any great or important undertaking without first invoking the blessings of God. We will therefore pause for prayer. Brother Chaplain, attend. Great architect of the universe, in thy name we have assembled, and in thy name we desire to proceed in all our doings. Grant, we implore thee, the continuing strength of thy blessing to all those assembled here today. May we, may we of this fraternity truly comprehend and practice the lessons embodied in the teachings of masonry, which will enable us to overcome temptation, learn to subdue our passions, and practice virtue. As with ceremony, we lay this cornerstone and dedicate this temple in thy name, May we again be reminded that only our daily actions do we prove to mankind that our lives are sincerely dedicated to God and to the well-being of our fellow men. And finally, may the record of our lives be such that we may each of us hear those welcome words. Well done, 
thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the kingdom. Brother Deputy Grand Master, what is the jewel of your office? The square, most worshipful Grand Master. You will apply the square to those portions of the stone which should be square. Senior Grand Warden, what is the jewel of your office? The level of the Grand Grandmaster. You will then apply the level to the stone to determine if it is set level in a manner acceptable by our ancient fraternity. Junior Grand Warden, what is the jewel of your office? Plum, most personal Grand Master. You will then apply the plum to the stone and determine if it is plum and acceptable to our ancient fraternity. dedicated in due and ancient ceremony and proven to be set square, level, and plumb. I therefore declare this stone to be committed to the uses of those men whose mission it is to extend the spread of useful knowledge, to practice charity, and to inculcate brotherly love and truth among all mankind. Brother Chaplain. Great architect of the universe, maker and ruler of the world, bless us in all the purposes of our present assembly. We humbly implore thee to give us at this time and at all times wisdom in all our doings, strength of mind in our difficulties, and the beauty of harmony in all of our endeavors. And now, to thy honor and thy glory, glory, we shall proceed to dedicate this temple. Amen. Brother Junior Warden. Vessel of corn to be employed. 
employed by you according to ancient usage. In the name of God, to whom all honor and glory, I do most solemnly dedicate this cornerstone to Freemasonry. Brother Grand, Senior Grand Warden. Most Worshipful Grand Master Wine, the emblem of refreshment, having been used uh, by our ancient brethren uh, uh, in, in ceremonies of dedication, I therefore present it to you for your use in, uh, for this ancient usage in this ancient custom. In the name of the Holy Saints, John, I do most solemnly dedicate this cornerstone to virtue. Deputy Grandmaster. <laughs> Grandmaster, in accordance with ancient Masonic custom, I therefore present this silver vessel of oil, the oil of joy. In the name of God, the Holy Saints John and Freemasonry, I dedicate this cornerstone to universal enlightenment. Brother Grand Chaplain, attend. And may the Lord God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, bless those assembled here in all their lawful undertakings, and grant every one of them in needful supply, the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment, and the oil of joy. Amen. The Brethren of Aslan Lodge Number 1, in the interest of masonry, it is their desire to promote honor among men, erected and furnished this cornerstone, which we are here today, and dedicated to God and Masonic precincts, which are synonymous. We, as masons, believe that it is necessary that there be wisdom to comply, strength to support, and beauty to adorn, all great and important undertaking. We as Masons acknowledge that God is the sole source of wisdom, strength, beauty, and life, eternal life. Such are the teachings of Mason, and as such we humbly and reverently endeavor to kindle that spark of life, the light of God, seek to build a temple eternal in our hearts and men. Yet, masonry is not a religion. Masonry seeks not to reform men. Masonry is a simple way to earn honorable living with our fellow man, and from time immemorial, this fraternity with tools and implements common to all men has sought only to point the way, the way to honorable living a way attainable by all mankind who are free to seek the truth. For if ye seek, ye shall find, such is the word of God. Brother Grand Marshal, you will make the proclamation. I do hereby proclaim this Masonic cornerstone dedicated in due and ancient custom for the purposes of Freemasonry and all mankind. By virtue of the power invested in me, I do by here declare this special communication of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons close. Thank you. Thank you. 
the Grand Order of Grand Lodge of Basins in Arizona. Hello, everybody. It was a great honor for me to be able to speak to you this day, the celebration of 150 years of masonry in Arizona and that of the Asset Lodge number one. We're also here for the rededication of this cornerstone here at the Evanwai County Courthouse. It was October 19, 1916, almost 100 years ago, that this cornerstone was originally placed. The Grand Master that day was Most Worshipful Frederick Wellington Perkins. Joining Most Worshipful Perkins as Deputy Grand Master was Most Worshipful, most worshipful Brother or Barry, uh, yeah, Most Worshipful Brother Morris Goldwater who was the uncle of Brother Barry Morris Goldwater and the great senator from Arizona and presidential candidate. This cornerstone was laid with the usual ceremony. Together with the stone, 35 treasures were placed in a copper box specially prepared for the purpose. The cornerstone was of critical importance to the ancient stonemasons, which we refer to as operative masons, because it served as a reference point from which the entire superstructure would be based. It was laid in what would become the northeast corner of the structure. It had to be precisely placed, of exact size, square, flat, both horizontally and vertically. Imperfection in this foundation, stone or its placement, would be echoed and subsequently amplified throughout the construction and eventually it would fall. Draftsmen verified these characteristics using basic tools, the square, the plumb, and the level. To speculative masons, which we refer to as Freemasons, the symbolic cornerstone is critical in our quest to become better men. Surely our internal and moral and Masonic edifices would fail the test of time should it be imperfect. The cornerstone's placement in the Northeast is also symbolic for Freemasons because every beginning candidate starts his Masonic journey from that point. As free and accepted Masons, we test our internal cornerstone with the same basic tools of our ancient operative predecessors, the plumb, the square, and the level. Our tools, however, are symbolic and are used, it is said, for more noble and glorious purposes. By the plumb, we are admonished to walk with humility but uprightly before God and man as we pursue our daily activities. The square of virtue is used to square our actions. The level guides us away upon life's path of a lot of time from which no man can deviate. While the operative mason would use the plumb to try a perpendicular, the speculative mason uses it as a reminder to remain, maintain a strict adherence to his moral principles. Typically, the square is a tool to test that an object, such, such as a large stone, has true 90 degree corners. For us, it symbolically teaches us to regulate our actions by not straying what we know to be good and true in our dealings with others. The ancient stonemason would use the level to assure that the cornerstone was laid perfectly level. Symbolically, it reminds us that when the cornerstone is good and true, we lead no one astray. In closing, I would like to mention that I had the rare pleasure of reading the oration by Frank Oscar Smith, who was a judge of Superior Court of Yavapai County when this stone was, this stone was originally placed. And he served as a grand, uh, acting grand order. As a tribute to him, I would like to close this oration by repeating his closing words. The everlasting hills surrounding us unchanging through the centuries, bear witness to the promise of the ages and the dawn of a new and better day. The majestic crags smiling down upon the scene remind us of the inspiring lines. I see the mountains stand, silent, wonderful, and grand, looking out across the land where the golden light is falling on distant dome and spire. I hear a low voice call, come up higher, come up higher. From the lowland and the mire, from the mist of earth's desire, from the attitude of self, come up higher, come up higher. Fellow citizens, let us heed the, heed the call and come up higher. Thank you. Now, if we may, very reverent brother,
Hi, Chaplain. If you would please give us our closing benediction. Great architect of the universe, I'd like to thank you for this day you have provided and this stunning setting of your work to do it within. We thank you for the opportunity as Masons to act within our community in a state of brotherly love. Ladies, and all you other beautiful guests out there, thank you for joining us today in this ceremony. Please, if we could have the Brethren of Aslan Lodge, please stay for a photo op with our Grand Lodge as well in front of the cornerstone. Guests, may God bless you, and may you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you.